Amen. We're not going to be before you long on this morning. Amen. But there is a word from God. Amen. On this morning, the word of God for the people of God will come from Matthew's, the 18th chapter. I'll be reading the 19th and 20th verse. If you have a man or if you're looking for that particular scripture to come on the screen, I just ask that you stand. Amen. In reverence of the holy word on this morning. Amen. It'd be Matthew's, the 18th chapter, 19 and verse 20. And the word of God reads as followed. Again, I say unto you that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. Verse 20 says, for where two or three are gathered together in my name, somebody say, in the name of Jesus. That's the name that they're referring to. It says, there am I in the midst of them. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord on this morning. On last week, uh, we shared that we would be preaching from the subject, the power of agreement, amen, with a subtext, simply, who's next? Most of the times when uh, this particular scripture is quoted, it is usually in conjunction with uh, a time of prayer and supplication, and often it is shared in hopes to encourage the people of God to come together and to unite in prayer. When I was growing up, they used to call this the name it and claim it scripture. Amen. Name it and claim it. But if you take the time to review not only this passage of scriptures, but also spend some time studying chapter 18 in its entirety, it will become very clear that the context and meaning of these verses were actually inspired to address church discipline. Uh, they're actually there to teach people how to engage their brother and sister in Christ who has sinned against them and refuses to acknowledge their fault. This particular uh, passage of scripture, it deals with biblical accountability. It's modeled after the Old Testament scripture that we find in Deuteronomy, the 17th chapter in the sixth verse which simply suggests that a person should gather one or two more witnesses to deal with conflict resolution. Amen. I know y'all getting quiet. We're not about to talk about no church discipline. Amen. On this morning. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But there is a twofold message in this passage. Jesus also teaches a lesson about the power of, of agreement. Agreement is noted as working together to produce an effect greater than the sum of one individual, which yields a greater outcome. Agreement is having one mind, having one purpose, and having mutual consent. Agreement means that you are in harmony and on one accord. Whether you realize it on this morning, almost every aspect of your life involves some type of contract or agreement. Amen. If you rose on this morning and you got out of bed and you flicked the light switch on, amen, you went into the restroom and you utilized the water, amen, and you might have uh, picked up your cell phone because you wanted to see what went on, amen, while you were asleep, amen. Turned on your satellite, you turned on your cable TV. You went downstairs because you were rushing and you cooked your breakfast in the microwave. With all these amenities that, that, that you might have utilized on this morning, you realize that you are in an agreement, and if you don't honor that agreement, you cannot have an expectation 
for those companies to stay in agreement with you. How it works, no agreement, no service. Am, am I, am I, am I tell it don't matter how much you paid last month. Amen. It don't really matter, matter, you, you know what I'm saying. It don't matter because you're in agreement, whatever is due on this month, don't pay it and see what happens. When it comes to our spiritual life, we must also understand that this principle of an agreement applies to our relationship with God also. In John, amen, the 14th chapter, John the Revelator, uh, the 23rd through 23 Fourth verse, he provides an inspiring example of a beautiful biblical agreement. Verse reads like this, Jesus replied, anyone who loves me will obey my teachings. My father will love them and we will come to them and make our home with them. Oh, that sounds good. Mm. It says, but anyone who does not love me will not obey my teachings. These words you hear are not my own. They belong to the Father who sent me. When you are in agreement with God, you love God and you obey his word. There is no such thing as a compromising agreement. Matthew 6 and 24 makes it very clear that you can't serve two masters. In other words, what I'm saying is that you cannot say that you're walking with God while holding hands with the devil. I'm going to say that one more time. What that means is that you can't say that you're walking with God and, and you're still holding hands with the devil. That's, that's not a good agreement. But on a spiritual note, the, the reason why the power of agreement is so important to believers is that it, it puts us in position, amen, it puts us in position where we can experience the move of God. You might remember those that are coming on Wednesday night, we begin to study the book of Acts, amen, a very a profound book. Acts 2 and 1, it talks about on the day of Pentecost. It said, and they were in one place and they were on one accord, which simply meant that they were in what? Agreement. It said, suddenly, amen, the sound of a rushing mighty wind came in and they were all filled. When we find ourselves in agreement with God and with other believers, that same suddenly that they experience that suddenly can invade your life also. I, I don't know about you, but every now and then I need a suddenly to kind of to kind of shake my life. You know, I mean, I, I'm going to just talk about me. Every now and then I, I find myself in a situation. I know that God is there because he promised to never leave me nor forsake me. But for whatever reason, I need a suddenly to show up in my life. Uh, you know, I, I, when I was a police officer, there was two ways that we responded to a call. One was non-emergency. That's where we kept our lights off. Amen. That means just some foolishness going on. And, and sometimes all we had to do was drive by the location and people would get their act right. But when a crime was committed, amen, and somebody was offended, somebody was hurt, we responded emergency with the lights on. Every now and again, I need God to turn his lights on. Because I'm in a situation that it needs his immediate assistance. I, I'm in a situation that, that I know that if God don't show up right now, I don't know what I'm going to do. Some of you are, are, are dealing with that now. You, you're dealing with, with, with chaos and you're dealing with, with, with uh, situations in your life that just seem to be out of control. And, 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 and you feel like you're the one that everywhere you walk, that black cloud just follow you. Just can't get away from it. Everywhere you turn, stuff is messing up and, and things begin to happen. But when you are in agreement with God, you understand that suddenly he can come in and bring peace. You might be overwhelmed with grief on today. For whatever reason, 
You wake up crying. You go to bed crying. You see somebody, you're crying. Just grief is on you. But when you have an agreement with God, suddenly God can bring in joy, unspeakable joy in your life. Dealing with spiritual dangers and temptation. Amen. But God promised suddenly he will provide a way of escape. Suddenly. Suddenly. Our Father in heaven knows our situation. He answers. His answers may not always coincide with our expectations. But one thing that we can know for sure is that when there is a need in our life, he promised to supply that need. The reason a lot of people had issues or are confused about the scripture I just read, they begin to focus on the two and three. A and they were wondering, is, 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 is God only going to work if there's two or three people together? I is God going to only work with, when the church is full? I is, God going, is God restricted to numbers? You have to understand that God doesn't, doesn't require a certain number of people in order for him to move. But the reason I, I, I believe that there's such a great emphasis in the Bible uh, 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 placed on people coming together is simply because as much as God desires for us to be in unity, the enemy works diligently to divide. He comes in to bring strife. In relationships, the enemy comes in to provoke anger and jealousy. He, he tries to keep people at odds. The enemy will come in your house. Amen. And you can put a, a, a do not enter sign out there if you want to. Beware a dog if you want to. The enemy don't care about that because he's a roaring lion. He trumps your dog. So he's going to come into your house. And he'll get you to wanting to forsake your families or, or having uh, uh, problems. He'll, he'll come into the church, y'all. Come on, somebody. Oh, come on, somebody. And most of the time, the devil's sitting on the back row. Mm. He's just sitting there with his legs crossed, looking who he can distract, looking who he can mess it, look who he can. can, can. Yeah, yeah, that, that's what he does. He ain't scared of church folk. <laughs> he ain't scared because you brought your Bible and you got the Bible app on your phone. He ain't worried about you. The devil will come in and he will, he will, he will try to divide, amen. And, and he don't stop there. The devil will take your very issues, the, the issues that we all deal with, that I deal with, that you deal with. The devil will take your very issues and what he'll do is he'll make you fear He'll make you fearful, and then he'll turn around and isolate you. <laughs> amen. You know how it is, amen, when you're going through stuff. Amen. As much as you might need some help, you don't want to be bothered with nobody. You're looking at your phone, and people is calling you. You know they're praying for you, but you won't answer. Amen. And people are trying to give you assistance, and, and, and they'll, they'll drive by your house, and you'll make sure your car is in the garage in the name of Jesus. They got cameras now. Somebody sent some to my house. that They got a camera in the doorbell now. Amen. So even when they push your doorbell, your phone and stuff light up, and you can see who it is. All that's letting me know is that you don't want to be bothered with me. Call before you come. But see, the devil don't care. The devil wants to come in, and that's one of his tricks. He wants to isolate you. The devil wants to tell you things like this. He, he'll say, according to Facebook, he'll say that because of Facebook, you'll look at Facebook, and you, you'll see everybody else's marriage doing good, and you'll see everybody else's relationship doing good, and the devil will tell you that your relationship ain't worth nothing, according to Facebook. <laughs> Uh, he, he'll tell you that you're not a good parent because your kids are unruly. Sometimes you done done all you can with them kids. They just got problems. Amen. You should have whooped them when they was one and two. You can't start whooping them when they get 16 and 17 and think that they're going to do what you asked them to do. But, that, but, you, but the devil said you was a bad parent. No, what it was, somebody just told you that when they was young, if you whoop them, you're going to go to jail, and you believed them instead of believing the Bible. That's what happened. Yeah. 
The devil will tell you that, that, that everybody's going to get healed but you. Everybody's going to give a praise report and a testimony but you. That, that's what the devil will tell you. He'll tell you that you'll become the poster child for unemployment. That you'll never get a job. Oh, y'all know I'm telling the truth on this morning. That you will never get past your addictions or your habits. That's why Romans 12 and 2 says that we are to renew our mind daily. You, you can't just renew your mind once a week when you feel like it. Word of God says you need to think on good things, things that are pure, things that are lovely, things that are holy, things that are. He said, think on them things because if you don't, the devil going to mess with your mind. During this time of attack, yes, it is necessary to have a, a private time of intimate communication with God. But we also need to exercise the power of praying in agreement with others. The Apostle Paul reinforces this with every letter that he wrote to the churches. In Romans 15 and 30, he urges you, brothers and sisters, by our Lord Jesus Christ, and by the love of the Spirit to join me in my struggle. Paul said, I'm struggling. And so he petitioned the church in his struggle to pray for him. He said, I, 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 I'm doing a good job, and I believe that God is, uh, is proud of me, but in my struggle, church, I'm writing to you. I'm sending you letters. I'm making you feel good. You, you, you're moving forward, but I'm still struggling. Sometimes you're doing good and you're, you're blessing people, but you're still dealing with the struggle. And they, they think because you're blessing them that you're not going through nothing. Mm. They're thinking because you're praying with them, everything is, is going okay in, in, in your house. But we find out a lot of times when we give, amen, sometimes we're giving out of hurt. We're sacrificing we could have used that bread that we gave you, that $5 that we bless you with. So Paul said, in the midst of my struggle, can you pray for me? Hebrews 3 and 13, the Bible says, to encourage one another daily so that none of you may be hindered by sin's deceitfulness. Yes, this spiritual journey was never meant for us to navigate through it alone. He said, no man is an island. Amen. You don't need nobody to pray for you. You don't need nobody to intercede for you. You don't need no help. I wonder, do you need God? <laughs> if you done arrive where, where, you, where, where you just don't need nothing from nobody, mm. God has designed us with it. At some point in time, we need something from somebody else, from the two or three. From the one. The power of agreement is very important. But even as we look at 19, amen, and we, we see about the agreement in them coming together, ver verse 20 is, is where I really want to camp at. It says, if you notice in, in verse 20, it says the more, most important detail that everything else hinges on is that Jesus must be present. I, I don't care how many of y'all come together, and I, I, don't, I don't care how many people are uh, uh, trying to agree. If Jesus, ain't, if Jesus ain't present, we have a problem. See, see merely uh, meeting together is not, a, not, not enough. You know, how many of you have been to the church services before? Amen. Don't raise your hand. <laughs> been to prayer meetings before. And you walked out and you like, I ain't felt nothing. Man, people done jumped, they done, they done sweated out their clothes, they done fell over benches, they done slobbered and spit. Man, I could have went to the movies. I, I'm just saying, I, I, you know, I'm not trying to get in nobody's business on this morning, but, but, but I, I've been in those occasions where it was a bunch of hype, but nothing was done. Nobody got a breakthrough. There was no release. And so I'm saying, why did we even come? 
you, you must understand that, that unity in prayer also requires unity in the spirit. In order for prayer to be effective, there must be unity in the spirit. Matthew says, when we come together in his name, somebody say in his name. <laughs> There's no other name that when we come in here, we're not coming in Cofield's name. You, we, we, you, you're not coming in, in Brother Pitt's name. You're, you're not coming in your mama's name, your grandmama's name. We, 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 we're not coming in their name. It says when we come in his name. Verse 20 goes on to say, it says, and then he will be in the midst. If you look at the Greek translation, that word midst simply means center or middle. That when we come in his name, he's going to be in the center of things. He's going to be right there. See, it's one thing to say that you believe in the name Jesus Christ. But it's entirely another thing to believe in your authority to use his name in faith. <laughs> See, a lot of people believe in Jesus. <laughs> you believe Jesus? Yeah, I believe Jesus. <laughs> you, you, you yeah, I believe Jesus. But do you have the authority, amen, in faith to use his name? See, his name is just not something that you put at the end of your prayers, amen, as a cliche. But, but praying in, in Jesus' name, it's a whole lot different. First of all, he must be the nucleus. Matter of fact, it's almost best to start out your prayers in Jesus' name instead of ending them in Jesus' name. To, to just get off on the right track. In the name of Jesus, then you can go into the rest of it. I come boldly before your throne of grace. The only way that I know how, as your humble servant, then you can get into that petition and, and talking about asking for stuff. But if you don't start out in his name, when you pray in the name of Jesus, what you're doing is you're confessing your faith that Jesus Christ is the only way to God. When you pray in the name of Jesus, you're praying with his authority according to his will, not only his will, but to his way also. When you pray in the name of Jesus, this is the one I like, you have power over the enemy. Luke, 17, Luke 10 and 17 says this, then the 70 returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to your name. And he said to them, I saw Satan. I just got a visual of this. It started to mess with me. He said, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Mm, mm, mm. Behold, I give you the authority to trample over serpents and over scorpions, which represent spiritual dangers. He says, and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall harm you. When you pray in my name, <laughs> in my name, when you pray in the name of Jesus, then you can pray with confidence. The Apostle John writes in, in 1 John 5, 14 and 15, this is the confidence we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything, this is the, this is the catch right here, according to his will. It, 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 must, it must all work together. It says he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, because we're in agreement with him. <laughs> if we're praying in his will, we are in agreement with him. I, I just want to keep you there. He says we know that he hears us, whatever we ask. We know that we have what we've asked of him. Somebody said this. It says praying in the name of Jesus it's like signing Jesus' name to your prayers. Mm. That after you finish, you just, you just sign his name. And he get a special delivery to the Father. <laughs> Father's hearing a whole lot of prayers. Some of them, may, they bouncing off of ceilings. But, but I believe that, that when, when, when a prayer comes, and, and it comes by way of Jesus' name, I believe God just kind of kind of just hold his ear like this. He said, wait a minute, hold on. <laughs> That's coming from my son <laughs> on behalf of Brother Heath. That's coming on behalf of Sister Mavis, on, on behalf of Sister Tanya, on behalf of Sister Lacey. It, uh, uh, that, wait a minute. Yeah, that sounds familiar. J-E-S-U-S. -S. 
that's my boy right there. If they're calling in his name, if they're, if they're pleading in his name, that means they must be in agreement with him. They must have a relationship with him. Because of that, then I can answer their prayers. God's blessings rest on agreement, unity, and his presence is with those who agree in his name. John 15 and 5 reminds us that Jesus is the vine, <laughs> and we are the branches. I know we some good-looking branches, but without the vine, <laughs> see, the vine shows out. Hey, we, we look good, amen. We got it together, but we just branches. We can break, <laughs> amen. We, we can break, but the vine, y'all know the vine is strong, amen. And it says as long as you are connected to the, to the vine, you okay. But when you start feeling yourself and thinking that you are robbing, that you are a mega branch, mm, that you your own tree, amen, that you, y'all know what I'm saying. <laughs> the word of God says when you separate yourself from the vine, you can't do nothing. In my clothes, and I told y'all I wasn't going to be long. Woo. Ain't got nothing to do with KU either. They don't play the four o'clock. I know y'all got, ain't going to mess with y'all on this morning. In, in my closing, amen. If you were present a couple weeks ago, amen, we had the opportunity Amen, to be blessed. Amen. Uh, we were able to witness the, the, the power of agreement, amen, and, and also the power of prayer. And Brother Lucky and Sister Janice, they came up, and they began to share about where God had brought them from. You wasn't here, you missed it. It was spontaneous. I loved it, Amen. Wasn't no, it wasn't no program. It was just God moved, amen, and they just felt led to share, amen. And, 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 they, and they began to tell what God had done in their life. Talking about agreement, amen, what they were praying for, they, they, they made emphasis that they, that they didn't do it on their own. Sister Easterwood made mention that while she was standing with her husband that, that at some point in time they began fasting, began coming together. Sister Janet, she, she had, a, had a group of those that were praying with her, amen. I, I know because I was one of them. She was, she was looking for God to move in her life, and, and she said, I, I, I'm dealing with this, and I don't want to do it alone. Hey, do you mind if you pray? I got other people praying. I said, hey, by all means, because the prayer of agreement works. So they, so they testified, but as Brother Lucky was going to his seat, he challenged those that were still in the struggle like Paul, that, 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 that still were waiting on God to do something in their life. And he said three, three words that really got to me. Amen. It, it really, really, really weighed heavy on me. He, he challenged the people of God, and he simply said before he, before he went to his seat, he said three words. He said, get in line. It, it really struck a nerve with me. You ask my wife, maybe, maybe it bothered me so much because you, you can ask her. I can't stand being in nobody's line. She'll get mad at me. We'll be going to a restaurant. And if I see people standing out the door waiting to get in, I say, we keep it going. I'm not standing in that line. That food ain't that good. Don't like standing in nobody's line. And if you're like me, lines are irritating. Lines is, to me is a waste of time. Amen. And don't let them have no bad kids up in that line. <laughs> I'd be like, ooh. <laughs> let your mama go to the bathroom. <laughs> Hit you real quick. Then I'ma leave. <laughs> just 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 ain't got no sense. Why they even bring you out to eat? They should be feeding you at the house every day. You don't get no surprises, you don't get no gifts, you don't get nothing special, because you got a problem. That's all the stuff I be saying in my mind. Got to be your birthday, because other than that, they wouldn't bring your bad self out. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Y'all know I'm telling the truth. But, 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 but what I have found out about lines is, is if you want something bad enough, you'll stand in the line as long. I mean, if you really want it, amen. Amen. You, 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 you'll stand there. And you won't move, amen. Matter of fact, if somebody try to get in front of you, if it's not Wednesday or if it's Sunday, they might have a problem. You know, on Wednesday and Sunday, we act right. They catch you on a Friday and try to cut. Talking about they holding a space for somebody else. Oh, we about to, no, nah, I've been in this line all day long. You ain't about to walk up in here. Y'all know I'm telling the truth. Come on, somebody. But when it's something that you really want, you will stand in line all day long. At some point while you're standing in line, somebody might ask the question, who's next? It's not that they don't recognize you. It's not that they are not seeing you there. They're asking who's next because that is a point of agreement. If you are not paying attention, if you're standing in line and you're on your cell phone, not watching what you're doing, if you are talking to the person behind you and not paying attention, what happens is, uh, especially if you don't speak up when they say who's next, and they usually say it one or two times. If you don't speak up or move forward, what you do is allow somebody else the opportunity to take advantage of your position. It's not their position, but because you are not paying attention, amen, because you're not doing what you are supposed to be doing because you're not in agreement with the person that is saying who's next, you 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 have the the, the possibility of losing your position. You know, it's the same way in, in our spiritual life. <laughs> it, it's a different kind of weight. Don't, don't, don't get me wrong. It's, it's a different kind of weight. But the process can yield the, the, the same results. While you are waiting on God or, or while you are sitting there pondering when God is going to show up, uh, uh, while you're wondering who's next, if you're not praying, if you're not reading your word, if you're not walking by faith, if you are letting your distractions get the best of you and the best of your time, what will happen is, is that you might compromise what you've been waiting on. Mm -mm, I know that's heavy. <laughs> because see, while you're waiting, there's something that you need to be doing. You need to be paying attention. <laughs> you, you need to be in your word because you want something from God. So, so if you're not spiritually in tune with what God is wanting to do in your life, you might compromise your position in what you are wanting to receive. Not saying that you might not ever get it, but because you're not paying attention, your breakthrough, your miracle, your release might be delayed. It's because that you have not come into agreement with what God has called you to do. My suggestion is, why are you waiting? Because all of us are in line for something. Amen. <laughs> Spiritually, because of how, how sanctification works, we're always striving <laughs> to get to where we need to be. So we're always saying, Lord, I need more. Lord, can you bless me? We should never be in our spiritual life, in the spiritual realm, and say, Lord, I'm satisfied. We should always have a under, I'm under construction sign above our head. Say, God, please be patient with me because I still need work. But why are you waiting? Because sometimes you're going to have to wait. You're going you to have to wait. My, my, my suggestion is while you're waiting, that's, that's not a time to, to, to bring distance between you and God. If it was me, this, this is just me. If I was waiting on God to maybe say who's next, I would be getting to God as close as I could. I, I, I'd be right up on him. God wouldn't have to wonder where my worship is. 
God wouldn't have to wonder where my praise was. Because, see, I'm waiting for God to do something for me. So, so, so while I'm waiting, God shouldn't have to worry about, am I going to pray about it? Matter of fact, I should be so close to God that forget y'all. I'm just talking about me. Forget who's next. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump in front of y'all because I'm so close to God. I, I know you got your prayer thing going on, which I ain't got nothing to do with me being the pastor. What I'm saying, I have authority because God said I had authority. And I can declare some things over my life, so I'm going to declare that I ain't going to wait. While y'all waiting, I ain't going to wait. Because I'm close to God, I'm going to step in. I'm going to say, Lord, I'm ready to get mine. The blessings of the Lord make it rich and added no sorrow. And maybe when I get mine, somebody else might turn around and say, Woo, he, he was waiting, but he sure didn't wait long. They come to me, brother, what did you do? I need my blessing. I need this job. I've been waiting. And it just seemed like God just opened the door for you. And you begin to tell your testimony. That, yeah, I didn't have a job, but I kept coming to church. <laughs> I didn't have a job, and I only had about 2 or $3, but I gave 50 cents of it. <laughs> I didn't have a job, but somebody came to me, and they didn't have a job, and they needed some encouragement. And instead of me pushing them away and saying, you need to be praying for me, I put my hands on them and said, Lord, bless them. And then God said, okay, you can go up to the head of the line. <laughs> he said, forget about asking about who's next. But you begin to say, I'm next. You walk in and say, when, when they come in and the praise team is singing, don't worry about nobody. Just say, Lord, whatever you got, I'm next. If you're passing out blessings, I'm next. If you're passing out miracles, I'm next. If you're passing out breakthroughs, I'm next. Now, somebody said it's my time to increase your territory. <laughs> j Bass said all he did was ask God, and he said, will you increase my territory? He said, indeed. <laughs> and God said, I'm going to increase it just, just because you, that's one of the shortest requests in the Bible. All he did was ask. It's my time. Y'all going to make me preach that. Woo! It's my time. Woo! It's my time. I'm not walking out of here not getting what God has for me because it's my time. I've waited long enough. I'm done, y'all. I'm done. Why are you waiting on God? Don't wait with an attitude, with a funky disposition. Can you say funky in the church? Amen. 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 Like you doing God a favor. I, I know I can say funky because he said he'll spew you out your mouth. So it means nasty. He, he, you ain't doing him no favor. He said, I'd rather, for, I ain't going to go there. But why are you waiting on God? You need to look at that as an opportunity to experience God's goodness. You need to be waiting in expectation. You need to be thankful for what he's already doing. See, I know we're in line, and I, and I know you it's your time, and, and you got some things that you want, but God has already done some stuff for you. God has already opened some doors for you. God has already made some ways for you. God has already healed you once. He done healed you twice. He done healed you three times. God has already did some stuff for you. So while you're waiting on him, he says, I want you to praise me for what I've already done. He said, if you just do that, <laughs> if he don't do another thing for me, that, that's the song they sing. If he don't do another thing for me, he's already done enough. <laughs> God, if you don't heal me down here, you're going to heal me up there. God, if I can't buy a Lexus down here, guess what? I'm going to walk on streets of gold. It don't matter. If I'm living in a house with one bedroom, you got a mansion for me up there. God, if you don't do nothing else for me, you've already done enough. You have to praise him in advance, even before 
it comes into fruition. <laughs> yeah, that's what he want to hear. Say that again. <laughs> he want he wants you to say thank you before you even receive it. No, it don't make no sense. No, it's not logical. Hey, man, somebody's wanting to bless you, and they say they're on their on they way to give you something, and you telling them thank you before you even get it. It don't make no sense. But when you praise him in advance, all credit is in his hand. he knows that when he bestows it upon you, Not all he ain't going to have to worry about you praising him and saying thank you then because you was already saying thank you before you even got it. Mm -hmm. He ain't going to worry about <laughs> blessing you because he's going to already know that you have a heart of thanksgiving. Hallelujah. Wonderful things happen when believers understand their divine right and believe in their authority to use the name of Jesus. To come in together in prayer and to come together in agreement. The power of agreement.